My name is Mary, and I'm 25 years old. I'm just an ordinary office worker, and I enjoy saving money little by little every month. My fiancé Thomas works at the same company as me and saves money for our wedding. One day, while I was out on a sales call, I spotted Thomas. Thomas! I called out to him from a distance, but there was a woman standing next to him. She was one of our clients, Laura, and they seemed to be more than just professional acquaintances. Thomas didn't notice me calling out to him at all, so I decided to follow them. I ended up seeing them enter a hotel together. That night, when Thomas came home, I confronted him. Thomas, you're cheating on me, aren't you? What are you talking about? Do you really think I would cheat? You were out on sales calls today, right? Yeah, it was a tough day. The deal just wouldn't go through. I was working in the same area as you, Thomas, and I saw you and Laura going into a hotel together. What? After hearing Thomas's explanation, I found it impossible to trust him anymore and broke off our engagement. Thomas was handsome and tall, and I always felt he was too good for me. But because of his good looks, he was extremely confident. Lucky you, Mary, getting to marry a guy like me. There are plenty of women out there who would kill to date me. He often made arrogant comments like that, and yet, whenever we went out, I was the one who ended up paying. It made saving up for the wedding take much longer. Despite all that, he had a kind side, which was why I decided to marry him. After breaking off the engagement, I worked even harder than before. We still saw each other at work, but we barely spoke. Then, a month later. Did you hear? Thomas and Laura, that client of his, are getting married. Can you believe it? He just broke off his engagement with Mary. Rumors spread that he was going to marry Laura. That day, when I got home and opened my mailbox, I found an envelope inside. It was unmistakably a wedding invitation, and the senders were Thomas and Laura. The office was already buzzing with surprise since we had just broken off our engagement, but I was even more shocked that they would invite me to their wedding. Did you get my wedding invitation? We're going all out, so you've got to come. The next morning when I saw him at work, he spoke to me as if nothing had happened. I can't believe you thought to invite me to your wedding. Well, we did date for a long time, right? Inviting your ex fiancé to your wedding isn't exactly normal. Come on, don't say that. You should see my happiness through to the end. At that moment, I realized it was the right decision to end things with him. See his happiness through to the end? He couldn't make me happy, and now he expects me to wish him happiness? How selfish can one person be? No matter how kind he could be at times, why did I ever work so hard to save up for a wedding with someone like this? Fine. I can't say I'll be genuinely happy for you, but I'll go so the seat won't be empty. Make sure you're really happy for me. It just wasn't meant to be between us, right? Besides, the whole office is excited about me getting married. You've got to come. The food and gifts are top-notch, so look forward to it. Having said that, he walked away happily. Thomas has always had a lot of pride, so he's probably going overboard to show off. But I can't help thinking that Laura is footing most of the bill for their wedding. He's overly confident, full of pride, and loves to show off, but he almost never paid for anything while we were together. Besides, he was the one who couldn't read the atmosphere and didn't even notice that most of his colleagues had lost interest in this marriage. Mary, thanks for coming today. We're going big, so make sure you enjoy yourself to the fullest. On the day of the wedding, I arrived at the venue with heavy steps. 
As soon as I arrived, I saw Thomas, all dressed up, standing outside the groom's waiting room, chatting happily with his friends and acquaintances. Why am I even here? A mix of sadness and anger churned inside me. Anyway, I got lucky. This here is my wife, Laura. As soon as Thomas spoke to me, he brought his affair partner, Laura, with him. She gave me a quick greeting. Laura is top-notch at work, the best in the company. She's great at her job, earns more than I do, and she's amazing at housework and cooking. She is a perfect wife. You're exaggerating, but thank you for the compliment. Breaking up with someone useless like you was the best decision I ever made. Mary, your sales numbers were mediocre, and you were bad at housework and cooking. Thomas insulted me in front of Laura, and the two of them laughed quietly as they looked at me. Just then, another woman walked over. It was Nancy, the CEO of one of our clients. Sorry to interrupt your conversation. Congratulations on your big day. Nancy, thank you so much. You're the CEO, Nancy, right? We've always appreciated your support. When Nancy spoke, Thomas and Laura immediately switched to a polite, respectful tone. Then Nancy noticed me and spoke up. Oh, Mary, is that you? Hello, Nancy. Thank you for all your support. I was wondering who was chatting so comfortably with the newlyweds. And it turns out to be you, Mary. By the way, the proposal you presented recently was fantastic. Really? I'm glad it matched what you were looking for. Mary always plans things with such attention to detail. From the client's perspective, the response from consumers has been great. You're too kind. My team even mentioned they'd love to work with you again. Thank you. I'll do my best. When Nancy started praising the proposal I came up with during my last sales visit, Thomas and Lori shot me displeased looks. So, you actually managed to pull off a decent job. Or did you just happen to steal someone else's idea? Of course I wouldn't do that. Enough already. Stop talking to me and go mingle with your guests, and there are plenty of important clients here who've been supporting you. I hate that kind of stuff. Me too. What? Are you kidding me? It's your wedding, so of course, you should be greeting your guests. Hey, they're getting delicious food and expensive gifts just by being here. Isn't that enough? Besides, after I'm married, I won't get to see or talk to you as much. So what? I don't care about you anymore. Even with Nancy standing right there, Thomas and Laura didn't hesitate to attack me. Are they really that desperate to show off their happiness to me? Just as I was getting irritated by their nasty remarks, Nancy spoke up. I've been listening, and honestly, your comments are less mature than a child's. I'm appalled. And by the way, I think it's really inappropriate to treat a woman like that. Nancy called out Thomas on his behavior. With all due respect, Nancy, this one here is my ex, and she's really got nothing going for her. I was just telling her to take a cue from Laura, who can do everything. Even so, you're an adult, and you should watch how you speak. No matter how good you look, it's what's inside that counts. Thomas looked uncomfortable after Nancy's remark. Trying to ease the awkwardness, he quickly changed the subjects to something about Laura. By the way, Nancy, it seems like you approved that proposal Laura submitted the other day. Thank you so much for reviewing my proposal. You really took your time on that one. I just wanted to contribute to the company as much as I could, so I worked hard on it. 
Is that so? Well, once the wedding is over, make sure to put in the final touches on the project. Laura really is talented. Keep up the momentum and keep climbing the ladder. Well, I need you to keep earning too, Thomas. I know, but getting promoted to team lead at my age is something to be proud of. After Nancy praised my proposal, Thomas started bragging about how amazing Laura is. Apparently, Laura is good at her job and earns more than Thomas does. From my experience, Thomas is extremely stingy. I wouldn't be surprised if he's thinking that with Laura earning more, he wouldn't have to spend his own money. Amid this awkward exchange, Nancy turned to me and asked, Oh, by the way, Mary, how's your father, Edward, doing? Actually, my dad, Edward, has a close relationship with Nancy. Yes, he's doing well as the chairman. I didn't expect to meet you here, Nancy. Thank you for always supporting my dad. If I had known, I would have come to greet you myself. Don't worry about it. I'm just glad we ran into each other. Hearing our conversation, Thomas stared at me in shock, blinking in disbelief. The chairman? What's going on here? My dad is the chairman of the parent company where Nancy works. Why didn't you ever mention that before? Is that so? Your dad must be an incredible person. You're Mary's ex, right? Did you really date her without knowing that? Thomas, realizing who I really am, looked like he was about to lose his mind. And it's no wonder. A stingy guy like Thomas must be kicking himself for letting the chairman's daughter slip away. If I had known that, I wouldn't have broken up with you, Mary. Hey, what are you saying? That's awful. I don't get it. Just because I'm the chairman's daughter doesn't mean it benefits you in any way. The money belongs to my dad, not me. Besides, aren't you marrying Laura? How can you say that in front of your wife? Actually, Laura and I haven't officially registered our marriage yet. We're having the ceremony, but technically, we're still single. Then, Thomas dropped a bombshell. Mary, how about we get back together? What? Thomas, what kind of nonsense are you spouting? Today is supposed to be his wedding day, and he's seriously saying this? As his ex, I was utterly shocked and hoped he was joking. It was fate that Mary and I joined the same company. If you'd told me about your dad earlier, I would have married you, Mary. You're so stupid. Even if I had told you about my dad, that doesn't make it your accomplishment, does it? If I'd said something, people would have just treated me differently because I'm the chairman's daughter. Thomas, you only go after people with money. I want someone who loves me for who I am not because I'm the chairman's daughter. Looks like it was the right decision not to tell you about my dad. People would see me differently. If the chairman's daughter were my wife, my standing in the company would change. You're such a fool. Don't you get that it means you wouldn't be properly evaluated for your own efforts? The chairman's title would overshadow everything you do, and your achievements wouldn't be recognized for what they are. I don't care about that. Being the chairman's son-in-law would mean a secure future. At this point, it was clear Thomas would do anything to protect his pride and image. Laura's shoulders trembled as she listened. Nancy looked at Thomas with a mix of disbelief and disdain. And besides, I have absolutely no intention of getting back together with you. The thought of spending my life under the same roof with someone like you, who acts like a freeloader but is all about pride and appearances, is unbearable. How can you say that? You could have spent your life with me, this handsome guy. You'd have everyone around you jealous. 
Nancy had to stifle a laugh at Thomas's completely oblivious, self-centered comments. You're such a terrible person. Do other people mean nothing to you as long as it satisfies your pride and ego? Thomas, how could you? I trusted you, and this is how you repay me. Come on, Mary had more money than Laura. Getting back with her makes more sense than staying with Laura. I can't believe this. I did everything for you, Thomas. As Thomas tried to push for a reconciliation with me, Laura started revealing her misdeeds. I worked so hard just to be with Thomas. I pushed myself to get promoted, worked late nights to increase my pay, and now I'm finally earning a high salary. But that's because you stole other people's hard work, didn't you? What? The proposals Laura submitted weren't originally hers, right? You were never good at coming up with ideas, were you? But suddenly, you started submitting great proposals, one after another. So I looked into it. Turns out, other employees had complained that you were stealing their ideas and passing them off as your own. I'm sorry, but if I didn't do that, Thomas would have left me. Without money, he would have disappeared, so I had to. With that, Laura broke down in tears right there. Even though I couldn't forgive her for cheating with Thomas, I realized that she genuinely loved him just as I once did. Thomas wouldn't even go on dates without money, so I could understand how she felt. I even started to feel a bit sorry for Laura, and at this point, it wasn't too much to say that Thomas was the real villain here. Nancy, is it time? Yes. I think it's time he learned a lesson. After confirming with Nancy, I decided to carry out the revenge I had planned. In fact, Nancy had been helping me with this plan all along. I had told her everything, how Thomas cheated on me, how Laura was his mistress, how he was all about pride and appearances, and how he never paid for anything himself. When I glanced at Thomas, he looked confused, as if wondering what was about to happen. I'm so sick of your attitude. Just because you're handsome doesn't mean you can keep riding on your looks. What's wrong with being handsome? You've got some nerve going after our valuable employees. And not just Laura. There have been others too, right? What are you talking about? I'm sorry, Laura, for not telling you sooner. What do you mean? Since breaking up with Mary, I've only been with Laura. Then, what do you call this? I scattered a pile of photos right in front of Thomas. The photos showed Thomas with other women besides me and Laura getting cozy at the office, hugging and even kissing them. These photos, they're fake. You've been spying on me? That's illegal. Illegal? You've got a lot of nerve to talk about crime when you've never paid a single dime on our dates. I paid for everything, such as transportation, meals, and entertainment. I even bought your tie and watch because you begged me to. You'd cancel dates right before payday and suddenly want to go out all the time when your bonus came in. Isn't that a crime? And that smug attitude of yours acting like you're doing me a favor by dating me because you're handsome. I'm sure Laura's felt the same way all along. We've been investigating your behavior for a while now after several complaints from female employees. And from the dates on these photos, it seems like they overlap with when you were dating both Mary and Laura, doesn't it? This is some kind of mistake. That's not me. I'm not that handsome. It's someone else. Even with his face clearly visible in the photos, Thomas continued to deny everything. So I decided to move on to the next part of my plan. There's something else I'd like to show you besides these photos. What now? I took the USB drive from Nancy and plugged it into the computer. 
Then, I loaded the data and played the video. When our client Thomas came here for sales, he approached me. He approached me on the street during a sales call and invited me to a hotel. He's handsome, and when he says things like that, you start to believe him. He never paid for anything. That's when I started realizing something was off. The video showed Nancy interviewing several employees, all of them speaking out about Thomas's bad behavior. Can you still claim that wasn't you? How did you get a video like this? This is unbelievable. Among the employees' testimonies were complaints about Thomas bad-mouthing and criticizing Laura. Is that really how you've always thought of me? I can't believe this. Who do you think I've been working so hard for? Laura completely lost it and started hitting Thomas. Stop it. Thomas yelled, but Laura's anger didn't subside. I'm not marrying you. This engagement is over. I'm so glad we didn't officially register it. This is goodbye, today and forever. Wait, please. After Laura broke off the engagement, Thomas turned to me, glaring and spitting out insults. Is this some sort of revenge because I dumped you? What? I'm the one who dumped you. Have you forgotten that I broke up with you after finding out you were cheating? Don't act all high and mighty when you can't even do your job. You're the one who can't do your job. Who was it that always shoved their work onto others, thinking they could get away with anything just because of their looks? Don't you know what everyone at the office really thinks of you? Suddenly, from all around the room, voices from employees started shouting, Yeah, do your job properly, and other complaints. Hey! What's going on here with everyone? You're just full of yourself, aren't you? Do you remember what you said to me when we got engaged? You said, you're lucky. You get to serve me for the rest of your life. I never said that. I don't remember. How convenient. Did you ever think about how that made me feel? He said the same thing to me. Do you think you're so great? Give back all the money and time I spent on you. Yeah, pay us back. What do you think women are? Enough with treating us like fools. Our angry shouts brought the room to a standstill. It seemed the wedding was called off, thanks to Laura's decision. You'd better pay all the cancellation fees for the wedding. It's only fair. A real man should take responsibility for his actions. Defeated, Thomas slumped, looking drained. Everyone watched, but no one moved as he remained in a daze. Then, someone slowly approached us. Has this all been settled? Oh my god, Dad. Edward. Calm down, no need to be so shocked. My dad suddenly appeared and spoke to Thomas calmly without getting angry. You must be Mary's ex-boyfriend. From what I hear, you cheated on her, leading to the engagement being called off. And today, at your new wedding, you've managed to have another engagement broken off. Do you not see any responsibility on your part? Well, if you want to fool around with multiple women, stay single. But if you choose to commit to one woman, the games are over. You're an adult. How do you not understand this? My dad continued speaking to Thomas, who was silent and looking down. No matter how good looking or smart you are, if your character isn't good, people won't follow you. And the way you treat women, making them pay for everything, is disgraceful. As a fellow man, I can't help but feel content for your actions. Thomas looked visibly deflated after hearing my dad's words. It was as if all the bravado he had just moments ago had completely vanished. The people in the room watched intently as my dad and Thomas faced each other. Is this really how you want to live your life? You're still young. 
Are you going to keep going down this path? You have parents who raised you with care. Why not use the good looks they gave you for something better? Be grateful to your parents for giving you a handsome face and don't do things that would bring them sorrow. Yes, sir. And as for trying to get close to Mary because I'm the chairman, just as she said, there's nothing to gain from that. I only judge people based on their abilities. Whether it's my daughter or son, if they don't have the skills, I have no problem cutting them off. I evaluate all my employees equally. I understand. I'm sorry for saying such foolish things. Thomas responded sincerely to my dad, then collapsed to the ground in defeat. My dad potted me and Laura on the shoulder, thanked Nancy, and quietly left the room. He had always been like that, never raising his voice, calmly reprimanding me even when I did something wrong. In a way, that was even scarier. But his words were always filled with love and made me think deeply. I hope something my dad said resonated with Thomas too. I don't think we'll ever see each other again. Honestly, I could ask for compensation, but since you were just my ex fiance, I'll consider the money I spent on you a gift. Just stay out of my life from now on. I won't ask for compensation either since we didn't officially register our marriage. But you'd better pay all the cancellation fees for the wedding. That won't be split 50 by 50, right? You were the one who betrayed me, so why should it be split? I didn't think you were like this. I hated your arrogance, but I was genuinely in love with you, so this is really shocking. I felt the same way. I don't care now, but finding out you cheated was devastating. When I said that, Laurel looked at me apologetically and apologized. I'm really sorry for cheating with Thomas without knowing he was engaged. I know there's no way to make up for it, but I feel awful for what I did to you, Mary. I'm sorry for causing you so much pain. Laura's apology was sincere, and I could tell she genuinely felt remorseful. Putting aside the cheating in a way, she's a victim too. When I think about it like that, I find it hard to place all the blame on her. The real culprit here is Thomas who used his good looks and smooth talk to manipulate women. Nancy, I'm sorry for dragging you into all of this today. I'm always grateful for everything you do, Mary. If you ever need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. With that, Nancy forcefully pulled Thomas away from the venue. Afterward, when I spoke directly with the employees who were still there, I learned that several women had been victimized by him. I've got tons of women who want to date me. You're lucky I'm willing to be your husband. Apparently, Thomas used to say this all the time. Some women even ended up in debt after he demanded expensive gifts like luxury shoes and belts on his birthdays. Others, who were approached by him at work, had felt too guilty to tell me and had been quietly suffering. I don't know why he felt the need to act so superior, but now, having moved past my anger, I just felt indifferent. Please, don't worry about me anymore. What? I'm relieved to be done with Thomas. The thought of staying with him sends chills down my spine. I feel the same. If you hadn't come today and I had gone through with the wedding, it would have been terrifying. And I can't shake the guilt of cheating when you were still around. But what's done is done, and there's no undoing it. You've already apologized sincerely to me, Laura, so let's put this behind us. Thanks to you, Mary, I was able to get my revenge too. I'm really grateful. That was our final conversation before we parted ways. Though I had nothing but anger toward Thomas, I couldn't muster the same feelings toward Laura. She had sincerely apologized, and I realized that in the end, all the women involved were victims of Thomas's behavior. I hope this experience changes him, 
but since I have no intention of ever dealing with him again, it's no longer my concern. Dad, thank you for helping me today. I wasn't trying to help. As chairman, I just stepped in because my employees were in trouble. After I got home, I called my dad to thank him. He says he wasn't trying to help, but I've grown up watching him be the first to rush to my side whenever I needed him. I love how he quietly supports me without making a big deal out of it. You know, even if I didn't help, I trust you to handle things calmly, Mary. I believe in you, so I don't worry much. I'm grateful to have a dad who trusts and watches over me. It's because of this that people like Nancy and others follow him. With the help of my dad and Nancy, I was able to get my revenge on Thomas. It also made a big difference that Laura ended up on my side, surprisingly enough. After finally putting Thomas in his place, I feel a sense of relief. As for what happened afterward, Thomas had to pay for the entire cancelled wedding, leaving him in debt. Though my dad spoke calmly, he discussed Thomas's situation with the executives at my company and our clients, leading to Thomas being fired. Given the risk of further issues, they deemed it unsafe to keep him employed. Rumor has it that after losing his job and being unable to repay his debts, Thomas was abandoned by his parents and became homeless. Hello, I'm Laura, and I'll be handling your account from today. My name is Mary, from Sales. It's a pleasure to work with you. Since then, life has returned to normal, and Laura is now the account manager for one of my clients. We exchange business cards with smiles. How have you been? Shall we have our meeting at the cafe nearby? We're on friendly terms now. Since then, Laura has turned over a new leaf and is working hard. I've decided to completely move on from the painful past and do my best at work, making sure I don't fall behind Laura.